Good morning, everyone. It is Brian, your handy dandy realtor here in the city of Windsor and finance major. Um, part of the importance of having so many degrees and designations is to point out and to teach a little bit about finance. So right now, there's a lot of people that have their $1.1 million house for sale all across Windsor-Essex County. They bought that $1.1 million house when interest rates were 2% because they qualified for it at their income level. So they went in, they used some of their equity. Let's say that they used $200,000 of their equity to buy a $1.1 million house. So it's worth about $900,000. They put $200,000 down their house that they have, they have a $1.1 million house that they owe $900,000 on. Here's the challenge. So before, fixed rates were 4.84%. So let's just say they took a variable mortgage. Let's just say that. And then they've been able to stay afloat with it and not need to refinance it. Or let's do it a different way. Let's say that they took a fixed rate, 5.6% rate, because at the time, March, the highest the mortgage rate was, was 5.6%. Okay. So that 5.6%, the payment, the interest payment on a $900,000 note at 5.6% would have been $50,400 a year, just the interest. You were paying the bank $50,000 of your income per year, just in interest, to afford living in a $1.1 million house. So what it was costing you per year to live your lifestyle. Just the interest. So the person you worked for was paying you $150,000 a year and you were using $50,000 of that just to pay the bank's interest. Just the interest. That was $4,200 a month just the interest going to the bank, and you wonder where money goes to. Over $1,000 a week going to the bank, just for interest. The bank is not your friend. You need to avoid the bank at all costs to have any money in retirement. So the difference between 4.81, today's rate, and 5.6, the maximum rate, if you would have bought your house at the top of the market, interest rate-wise, the difference is about $541 a month that you'd free up if you took your 5.6% rate and refinanced it to 4.84 if you could. The bank has to approve that. Can't have any blemishes anywhere. So the bank has to approve doing that. And then you're at five point, you're saving $540 a month. And your interest rate went from 42 to 36. You can see why the bank doesn't want you to do that. They're like, wait a second, we're collecting $4,200 from you per month, and now you want us to, uh, to only collect $3,630 from you per month. We're going to make $600 less in interest to do that. They, that's why they have to approve you. That's why you can't have any blemishes that you have to, they have to really, really, really like you in order to do that. You need a mortgage advisor at the bank who's going to fight for you or a mobile mortgage person at the bank who's going to fight for you to be able to get this done. Literally fight for you. Put the boxing gloves on and make your case. It's not easy. They only allow the people with the perfect perfect to be able to do that. But let's assume that you are perfect perfect. 
Now, remember that you put $200,000 of your own money in, money that you might have earned from the last house or whatever it was. You're going to pay if we sold, let's, so let's flip over. We want to save money. We want to get back. We want to right size our mortgage now. And you'll be able to see why this is so difficult to do. It's so easy to move up and to justify the move up into a 1.1. But you were living in a 600. And that's where you should have been where you should have stayed. It was a beautiful $600,000 house in a good neighborhood. The kids were ensconced and you drug them out because the bank at the time was offering you, oh my God, you could move to a 1.1. You could be the Beverly Hillbillies. Oh my gosh, we're moving up to be the Beverly Hillbillies. Let's just go because money free. You weren't thinking about how much of a trap that was at that time. And now you're, you don't have any money to go to um, <coughs> wherever folks go with kids, uh, 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 the water park place at spring break. You just don't have the money for it. No, we're, we're living in a 1.1. That was more important than going and doing and experiencing things in life. Or you can continue that whole trend and keep building up debt that you'll never get out of and have all that stress in your life. I'm talking about how to be stress-free. Right? You got caught in all the same things that everybody else got caught up in. Now, and you want to get that fixed. So, you go in and you say, gee, I need to get the most out of my house that I possibly can. So I've shown you that if you're going to do that, if you're going to try to maximize out your return on your house that you currently have and downscale back to that $600,000 neighborhood, okay, that's fine, but you're going to need to pay 2.5% or 2.0% or some kind of commission to the selling realtor. And you're going to need to pay 2. If you're trying to maximize your return, I've shown you how you need to pay 2.5% to the competing realtor to get the maximum value for your house. To try to get back your 1.1. But, as I've also shown you, you're only going to get about 1.050. There's about a $50,000 deduction right now in million-dollar houses. Because there are a lot of them. Tons of them sitting out there. They're just piling up like beer cans on the side of the road by the train tracks. By the busy train tracks. So at the end of the day, you're going to need to do a $50,000 price reduction. You're going to sell your 1.1 for 1.050. And you're going to end up paying 2.5 and 2.5 to try to maximize your return. Uh, you're going to end up paying $59,325 of HST and commission to plus moving costs. We haven't even figured that in. To be able to move back down to that $600,000 house to try to get back some reality in your life. Right. So you're... When you think about it, you're going to lose 50 grand here on your 200. Because you put 200,000 dollars down, you're going to lose 50. So you're down to 150. But then you're going to pay $59,000 worth of cost plus moving. They haven't even factored in moving. So 150 minus 59,000 is 91,000. That's what's going to be left of your 200,000. You have lost 110,000. 110,000 is going to be gelled as a loss. Hey, I'm just going to have to walk away from $110,000 to get this done, to downsize to the right house that I should have never, ever, ever left in the first place, especially if I want to retire. Because there's only so much money in your world. There's only so much money in my world. Once I shoot this video and put it out there, there'll be more money in my world because people will tune in and watch this and call me up and say, hey, Brian, yeah, um, you're right. I need to get this fixed.
can you please sell my 1.1? And woohoo, I'll come in and I'll make some of this money. And I don't owe the bank any money, so this is all my money. Woohoo. Woohoo. Helps me pay for my retirement. Thank you very much. And every other realtor is the same way. Let's just assume that they none of them have any debt and they're, you know, the, the, the BMW and the Prada bag that they have is all theirs. Let's just assume that it's not. Because they're doing the same thing here, too. Right. But anyways, I digress. 59000 You got 91000 to put down on a $600,000 house. Because you're downscaling from your 1.1 to six hundred. You're moving back to the neighborhood that you should have never left when interest rates were so low. It was a comfortable place. It was a really nice house. Everybody was happy there. The kids were riding their bicycles around and doing whatever it was. Now you can't even afford bicycles because you've got a 1.1. You can't afford to go to the water park because you got a 1.1. You're trying to hold on to that 1.1. And we don't, and we can't keep doing it. It's becoming too exhausting for you. You'll have a heart attack at this pace. We don't want that. So... 600000 you put $91,000 down, this money that you still had left. That leaves you a mortgage with $509,000. So how much money did you free up? That's an interesting question. So at 4.04%, the interest rate would be 24635 Okay. So if you take 43,560, 36, whatever that number was, 36.30 a month that you were paying to the bank in interest, if you refi it at the bank with a $600,000 mortgage, you'd only be paying them $2,052 a month in interest, $500 a week. But you would have lost 110000 because you would have gelled your loss. 110000 is what would be gone. Just wiped out. Just gone. Plus moving costs. Okay. Now, how do we get back our 110000 How long does it take us if we were to do this, move from our 1.1 neighborhood, which we can't afford in the first place anyway? We're just barely hanging on there, Brian. Back to our $600,000 to give you a little bit of breathing room. How long would it take? Because our savings would be $1,578 a month that we're not paying the bank in interest. How much, how long, if we invested this money in a just a balanced segregated fund or a balanced mutual fund earning 6% per year? It'll do a little bit better than that, but 6% per year. How long would it take us? to make back our $110,000, a hell of a long time. It's so easy to move up to the 1.1 because the carrot is out there, but it is very, very difficult to get your money back once interest rates change. And that's what I was talking about back in the day when interest rates were free. Okay, yeah, this is stupid though, because it's going to crush you like a bug. And it crushed hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Canadians. They all fell into the trap. Oh my God, money's free, Brian. I want to go out and buy more houses. How did that work out? It hasn't. That's why I'm shooting this video for you. Okay, so now the fifteen seventy eight that you're saving per month, it's not yours to go spend on happy holidays and stuff. You've got to put that back because you've got to get your 110 back if you're ever going to retire because you need your own money to retire. The bank won't finance your retirement. Just won't do it. Okay? Just won't do it. You need money. So fifteen seventy eight a month has to be invested in a good mutual fund or segregated fund, earning six percent per year, which is point five percent a month. And these are baseline numbers. These are our assumptions. 
We're not going hog wild. Yeah, if we earn 9%, woohoo, we'll make it a little bit faster. But then the next year, you might only make 4%, or you might be down 2%, or you might be whatever. Who cares what it is? But the average annual return over a period of time will be 6%. You can try to game the system, and every time I try to game the system, I come up a loser. Every time I try to game the system, I come up a loser. It's my ADHD. It costs me a lot of money. But I'm getting smarter. I'm shooting these videos for me, and I've did this video for me, and I've got my house paid off. Took a while, but I got there. You'll get there too if you want to, if you want to be able to retire. So, in the first year, this is the interest you'd earn, or the growth you'd have, Putting fifteen seventy eight a month into a good segregated fund, earning 6% per year. In one year, at the end of one year, you would have 19473 of cash in that account. You can't go spend it because you're trying to save for retirement. Every time you go to the water park, you're avoiding your retirement with this money. you got to have new money, new Oh, gee, the company is paying me more per month. That's the money that I can go do some things with. I can go camp in a camper trailer or I can go camp someplace. That's why I go camping. I'm not a rich person. I'm trying to build money for retirement. Okay. So after the first year, you have you'd owe $489,000 on your $600,000 house you would have gotten some of your money back. After year two, you'd have 40139 You'd owe 468861 And you'd have this equity, you'd have about $131,000 of equity in your house that you've technically saved for retirement. Okay? Which is good. So if we went from 21 to 40, that's 19,000, right? And here we had about 19,000. So it would take, um, you'd have 59,000. Then you'd have uh, 69, 78,000. Then you'd have 78, 88, 98, 97,000 of your 110 back that you lost. So the answer to the question is how long would it take you to get back square? It's about one, two, three, four, five, five point five years to get your money back doing absolutely nothing and then once you got your money back then you could reward yourself with a trip possibly to the water park then you could possibly say okay hey great i'm going to reward myself for getting back my money and i'm going to go buy a 10-foot pop-up trailer and go camping some two or three times a year, because I find it relaxing. Okay, great. You can afford to do that. 5.5 years, after 5.5 years, you got your money back. You got your $110,000 back. You got it back out of the bank. So that's how long it takes you to correct the boat when interest rates were free, when they were dangling that carrot and I'm not going to draw a carrot here, but when they were dangling that carrot, maybe I am going to draw a carrot in front of you, and you bit the carrot to move to a 1.1, but then interest rates soared, and they're coming down slowly. Now, yes, you could sit there and say, hey, Brian, but, but interest rates are going to get cut again. I might be able to weather the storm here. 
But then the cost of groceries have gone up. So even as interest rates are coming down, groceries are going up. You haven't got this year's renewal rate for your auto and home insurance. I guarantee you that's going to be at least 10% more. Because inflation also came in there. Governments printed massive sums of money to save the economy in COVID. That's what created all of this inflation. And then we've got the hooties and the blowfish that are you know, blowing up ships in the shipping channels. For some reason, we allow that to happen. Don't know why. And that's costing all of us all kinds of money just in transportation costs for the things that we need to buy. Because we have to go the long road to China now, not the short road to China. So all of this inflation has come in and is crushing us like a bug. Now, let's flash forward. And housing prices, as I've shot in every video, have stayed steady. The average selling price in the city of Windsor is five sixty one. Stayed exceptionally steady for over a year now. That's a win in an inflationary environment. And in some neighborhoods, there's been some growth of six percent. Some neighborhoods, not all neighborhoods, some neighborhoods some good affordable neighborhoods have changed values. But a lot of the other, the variable neighborhoods, they've gone down. I know over on, where was it? Jeez, on Lincoln, um, I sold a house for over half a million dollars. It was $510,000 in the, in the heyday, 510 on Gladstone. I dressed all up for it because it was over a half a million dollar house. Now that house is worth $360,000. It's what it's worth. It's what it was worth back then. It's just money was free and everybody was, oh, money's free, Brian. I want to go buy. I want to go, my, the bank's giving money away. I want to hurry in and I want to buy as many houses as I can possibly qualify for. And those folks, what they did was they put their money together to buy that house at 510. Three or four people came together. Let's use all of our credit and we'll go do this. We'll make lots of money. And they lost their shirt. When you drive by the house, grass is eight, nine inches tall. There's a couch out on the front porch now. They lost their shirt. Makes no sense. Made no sense back then. I tried to talk everybody out of it. And only four people got through. Four. How many people got through, Brian? Four. They all came in and they bought houses because interest rates were free and they had lots of income and they're like, Brian, but you don't understand. Okay, fine, I'll help you buy a house. But I've told you about the risks. Yep, Brian, you have. You've been the only, and I got, uh, all four of them have told me the same thing. Brian, you are the only realtor that has ever explained any of this to me. Thank you so very much, but I want to take the risk. Okay, great. We'll go out and buy you a house. So four got there. Three of them have resold already. And we've gotten most of their money back. Not all of it, but a hell of a lot of it. And part of the reason that I was able to get most of their money back was I took my commission because they bought from me. I took my commission down from 2.5 to 2.0 to help them get back their money because I don't want to be responsible for crushing their retirement account. So we've got three of them and the fourth one is supposed to be available here September 1st. It's in Ford City. 
supposed to be available. You know what happened there? The folks moved into the house. And he double checked them and quadruple checked them and quadruple quadruple checked them. He was um, being very cautious about who he rented to. They moved in, they paid him like a month or two of rent, and then they stopped paying rent. And they've lived there for two years now, rent free. For two years, he's been making the mortgage payment out of his family's income up in Toronto, which is pretty substantial, but it still hurts to try to keep the house from being stolen from him or taken back by the bank. And he's been subsidizing this freeloader living there. It's not a way to make money. There's no shortcuts in life. So anyway, that last house is going to be available in September. Hopefully, September 1st, hopefully, to be able to pound in the sign, get in the house first thing. He's not even been in the house. What's the house even like on the inside? How much work am I going to have to do to get the house square back again to be able to even get the freaking thing sold? How much is that going to cost? We don't know that yet. So anyways, I digressed a little bit because I went into the concept that, hey, people bought houses with some of their equity that they had built up in their houses. And now they're trying to get back square. Kind of a different video, isn't it? But you can see how after five, back to my original, my million dollar client, it's going to take 5.5 years to get back there. And that's all things being even. That, that is markets moving up 6% per year. What if there's a 10% year down? We haven't had one in a long time. So everybody thinks, oh, it never happens, Brian. That doesn't happen in my lifetime, Brian. But it's coming. There'll be a 10% down year. There'll be a 12% down year. We have to have one every so often for a healthy market. So that might take more than 5.5 years. It just depends upon when this happens because we know it will happen. When will it happen? We don't know. Could it be next year? It could be. We don't know. And then that's going to take that 5.5 years and make it 7.0 years. Before you can go take the kids. I just got, it's funny, as I'm shooting this text, I just got a note from the person in Toronto about the house in Ford City. <laughs> what a great timing. And, and they're like, yeah, we should think about September 1st being able to close this thing up. It's funny how the timing came across on that. And I'll be all done with them. All four of them. Resold. And they've all told me the exact same thing. Brian, you're the only realtor that's ever, ever, ever pointed this out to us. We thank you so very, very much. Thank you for helping us get some of our money back and limit our losses. We don't know what we were thinking. We were the stupidest people on the planet back when money was free. So... If you're trying to get back square so that you can get back some of the money you've lost and get back to being able to take the kids to the water park because inflation has crushed you and because interest rates have crushed you and you're done with living in the 1.1, you just want to get back to that nice 600000 Give me a jingle. We'll do this. I'll help you after we get everything all done and we get you back firmly ensconced in that comfortable 600. We can start saving money to get you back square. Because I do that too. That's why it's important for your realtor to have a degree in finance too. It's the largest financial decision you will ever make in your lifetime. And you're using a realtor who's only taken five classes, has nothing else, no other experience whatsoever. And you're using them for financial advice.
Christian doesn't make any sense, does it? When you've got a guy like me just sitting here waiting, I'm sitting here on the couch with my cat, waiting for the next person. I do have an appointment today at one to go help a person in Ford City, actually, who lost her husband, unfortunately. And she wants to sell the house and she wants to make some changes. So I'm going out to see her at one o'clock. It's what I do for a living. I help people to make some of these decisions. Now, so this ends this video. Nobody will watch it. You know why nobody will watch it? Because it talks about the right numbers. It talks about all of this in common sense terms. I show it to you over and over. You can rewind this 67 times and learn everything about this. And you need to know it inside and out. So that when interest rates go back down again, you're like, no, hell no. If anything, I'm going to refinance my $600,000 house at 200, uh, 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 I'm going to refinance at 2% interest. And I'm going to take out the longest note I possibly can at 2% because that's free, Brian. And then I'm going to save money for my retirement. And when I get to retirement, my $600,000 house is going to be all paid off. I'm going to have six. That's a different video. And I'm going to shoot that one here soon. So if you'd like to downsize and right size your house and you'd like to get rid of some of the extra crap that you've bought along the way too, that is just sitting in the garage you don't even use anymore. I mean, know that too. I send all that stuff to auction every day. It's part of the one o'clock appointment. I'm going to go out and help her sell some stuff too. Help her right size, help her get the house in order to be able to get it sold, to be able to move to wherever it is that she's moving to. I'll know more about that at one o'clock today. But thanks for watching this 32 minute video. Very few of you will. Um, if you have any questions about housing in the city of Windsor, do not hesitate to give me a jingle. Brian Price, I am the science of real estate. 519-995-6145, 519-995-6145. It is a massive commission check to sell a house. Shouldn't you be using a realtor with degrees and designations who can explain this stuff in common sense terms? Who's like the other four who have all come in and said, Brian, you're the only realtor that's ever told us about this stuff. We're so much smarter because we've worked with you. Can you please sell our rental property? And try, desperately try, to get us back as close to square one as possible so that it does not take us seven years to get back. Please try to get us 5.5 years back because we created this train wreck. And we're going to ask you, please use your degrees and designations to try to cut our time from seven years to 5.5 years. It's a lifetime. Give me a jingle, 519-995-6145, 519-995-6145. I'm here to help. That's why I do these videos. Have a great day. Bye-bye.